What's up guys, it's Alex the Magician here, back for another video. And in this video, as requested, I am going to show you guys how to actually do a break on Luna. And in this video, we're going to focus mostly on the easier, uh, quote-unquote, Luna-friendly breaks. Uh, so anything that is easily burned. So anything that's on foot, uh, anything that is not super fast. So things like Black Knights, uh, Nagas, Unicorns, Cavaliers, all of those things are pretty easy to burn. Certain flying creatures can be easy as well uh, if you're facing something like uh, Manticores or Wyvern. They're not that bad, certainly not as bad as something like Angels uh, or something that's fire resistant. Uh, but they can be a little bit trickier because they do not walk, so you cannot get them to walk through multiple layers of a firewall. So you have to be smart about how you do that fight. So first of all, what I'm going to say is one of the things that I really like to have when I'm doing uh, breaks on Luna is angels. First of all, angels are usually going to give you first speed. And second of all, if you are facing something that uh, you cannot necessarily burn with one or two firewalls, then the angels can actually finish the job if you have a few of them. So... For that reason, uh, whenever I'm playing as Conflux and when I see Consas, I always think that's a really, really good thing. Like when I'm thinking about restarting or not, Consas are really, really beneficial. So here in this map, we actually gathered a uh, Cons uh, and there were three angels in this Cons here. So I'm going to show you guys how that is beneficial in a fight against um, these Manticores over here. Uh, but first, I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations without the angels. So sometimes you're not going to have angels. Sometimes all you're going to have is uh, pixies or sprites. Uh, and you're still going to need to try to do the break uh, so that you can try to break as early as possible. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to be using sprites and pixies for this demonstration against these crystal dragons. So actually, Crystal Dragons are not the easiest ones. Uh, crystal Dragons are a bit challenging. I've definitely died to them before. So you may want to practice these things uh, before you actually get into a real uh, game situation with something like that. Because, hey, uh, if you mess this up, you will die with Luna. And uh, that's pretty much the game lost right there. So in this case... What I have learned about the Crystal Dragons, first of all, they are fast, right? So you're not going to be able to outspeed them. You're not going to be able to outspeed them even with angels, right? So what we want to do here is we want to try to control their positioning. And I actually have three sprites, the upgraded versions, and four pixies uh, so that they first will attack the sprites. And then we can kind of control if, they, if we put the sprites up and then... Uh, the pixies down and then they all move up for the sprites then we can put the firewall in the middle and then they go through multiple layers of a firewall so that's how we can control that positioning but you definitely want to practice this a couple of times because hey I definitely practiced it a few times after I died to them uh, before and I kind of learned this method uh, usually it works but still you want to be careful right and the other thing, obviously, is you want to make sure that you have uh, enough spell power to be able to burn them pretty reasonably. So in this case, it means that you want to gather uh, as many artifacts that increase your spell power as possible. Uh, you also want to have expert fire magic, but you're usually going to have that by like level five or something like that. And, of course, you want to take these, uh, like, Schools of Magic and Star Axis and the, uh, like, Coliseum of Magi to increase your spell power as well as you can. You don't necessarily want to go, like, too far off-road for, like, Schools of Magic, but if they're next to the road like this, then, yeah, definitely visit them with Luna. And, of course, you want to level Luna up as well so that you can actually get a decent amount of spell power. So here we actually have this artifact that gives us 14 spell power, but I decided to make it a little bit more difficult on myself and only um, have this uh, artifact. So we have 11 spell power, which is doing 320 damage. Uh, the firewall is doing 320 damage, which is uh, a little bit more realistic, I would say. In most cases, you're going to be breaking with somewhere around uh, 10 spell power or something like that. 
Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into this. Oh, and one more thing that I forgot to mention, as in my previous Luna guides, uh, I've mentioned this, that it's beneficial to have an anti-morale artifact, right? So something that uh, makes sure that whatever you're fighting is going to have neutral morale. You don't want them to have negative morale. You want them to have neutral morale, right? So that you don't die to positive morale, because that can happen. But in this case, I'm actually going to be doing these demonstrations without uh, an anti-morale artifact because, hey, sometimes that's what you're going to have to do. And um, I'm just going to show you guys that it is possible. It's just a little bit dangerous. It's, um, it's a little bit tricky and do this at your own risk. But sometimes you do have to take that risk. So uh, let's go and do this Crystal Dragons fight. So you see, the, already that kind of threw a wrench in, into my plans because uh, this guy did not move for the sprite because uh, that guy got morale, right? So that's exactly what I was talking about. But in this case, I think we can still manage. So what we're going to do, they get to move first, right? So I need to put a firewall down like this. And I'm going to put my uh, pixies down. So basically, I need them to get burned three times. It helps that there are two hex units, so they will get burned more times than normal. But you still want to be pretty careful about this, because, like I said, if you die, you lose the game. Okay, so you see we already burned one of those crystal dragons. Let's see if the second one gets burned as well. Let's go ahead and put another firewall up like this. Good, good. And that guy actually went around this way and uh, he got burnt as well. So we only need to burn him one more time. Uh, this firewall is actually going to disappear because he moves first at the beginning of next turn. So I'm going to need to put up another firewall. And just move over here. And that's it. So as long as you control their positioning, even these kinds of fights can be pretty easy. But uh, I definitely made that look easier than it is. Because like I said, the first time I tried to do this fight, I died. <laughs> so try to practice something like this before you take on uh, like the Crystal Dragons, for example. I'm just going to repeat this real quick just to show you guys that it basically works the same way again. So as long as you kind of understand the tendencies of uh, these uh, NPCs, these creatures that you're fighting, uh, you will be able to do even challenging fights like this without too much risk. So... But you do want to practice, you do want to like play this maybe against the AI and uh, do some practice on your own uh, because it just takes practice to really understand how to do this properly. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you guys is um, these Cavaliers over here. There's 1599 of them, which is pretty much the strength of a break. Actually, it's probably more than the strength of a break in this case. So, let's try to do that fight. Now, this is going to be a bit challenging because um, my spell power is not super high. And there are a lot of them. But I think we can manage. And with practice, anybody can manage this as well. Now, uh, again, I'm not going to take the angels. I'm going to bring uh, the sprites because if there is an upgraded stack, I want to outspeed them. So that's another thing. If if you can, if you can outspeed them, then uh, do that. You know, so the crystal dragons, it was impossible to outspeed. But we can outspeed the cavaliers with sprites, right? If we only take pixies, uh, or I mean... Yeah, if we take the unupgraded pixies, then we will we will not outspeed them. We'll have the same speed. So that means that the pixie will move and then the cavalier will move. Pixie moves, cavalier moves. So that will kind of uh, mess up your firewall mechanics. So you want to try to predict as much as possible how they're going to move. 
And for that, you kind of want to have a unit that outspeeds them so you can actually control uh, the way they move. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, guys, so now we're doing this Cavaliers fight, and uh, what we're going to try to do, uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is that you want to try to use the terrain to your advantage as much as possible. So what I'm going to try to do here, for example, like if you put a firewall like this or like this and get them to, to go through it, that means they get burned three times. So in these kinds of fights, that is very, very helpful, right? So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to move all of the pixies down, and have everybody go through either here or here. So I think first I'm going to put a firewall up over here. Alright, now I'm going to start putting firewalls over here. Okay. Now let's put a second wall here, and this should kill... Actually, let's do it like this, I think. This should kill any <clears throat> any of these Cavaliers that go through like that. Mm -hmm. Now we're just going to do the same thing. Now, this here is a dangerous moment, because we do have these two stacks right here, and they could actually kill me if, if one of them gets morale. So these stacks are fine, they're just going to walk th through this way, but these stacks could potentially kill me. So if you don't want to take this risk, if you don't want to take this risk, I would suggest at this point retreating. Because you did burn a decent amount of them, and it's okay to hit and run the break um, if you, like next run, if we attack this again, there would be like half of them, and we would be able to burn them pretty easily, right? So if you do not want to take this risk, if you don't want to risk actually dying here, I would suggest retreating at this point. But we're going to risk it. We're going to risk it because, hey, sometimes uh, that's what you have to do. Okay. Okay. See, and now we can just put another firewall up like this, move down, and that's it. So there you guys have it. This was actually a pretty, pretty difficult fight uh, to do like this, but we were able to manage. Okay, and the last one that I'm going to show you guys right now is these manticores here. So the thing about these manticores is we don't have, so like I said, the flying units can be a little bit tricky, right? The flying units like manticores and wyvern, even though you can burn them, uh, <clears throat> they're not like angels or something like that that is very difficult to burn. You can burn the manticores, but the thing is, is that they're going to fly over your wall. So you cannot do what I just did with the champions, for example, to get them to walk through them or the, the crystal dragons, right? So, the mechanic to fight against the Manticores is to use a double wall. To basically have one unit in the center and cover them with a double wall and get them to basically get burnt by a double wall. So what that means is that you're going to have to finish, you're going to have to be able to take out the stacks, uh, whatever they are, with two firewalls, basically. In this case, we do not have the spell power to do that. Well, if I did if I did this, maybe I would, right? 380. So the Manticores have 80 HP, right? Assuming the stacks are 9, uh, then with this spell power, I would be able to do it, right? But just to show you guys another interesting mechanic, we're going to actually have less spell power. So you want to calculate how many you can burn. And if you are not sure about how many there are, you want to maybe sacrifice a hero to check. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to get our three angels that we got from this cons earlier. And we're going to use them to finish the stacks that we don't burn. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So in this case, three angels should be plenty, and even if you end up losing one angel or so, this is still, uh, I would still consider this a successful break. And that has happened to me before, you know, doing a break like this with three angels and losing an angel uh, because there's like a Scorpio stack and they end up paralyzing your angels or something like that. So that can happen, but still losing one angel and doing an early break uh, on something like this is still beneficial in most cases. Okay, so like I said, there are nine of them, right? So that's uh, 720, right? So I need to be doing 720 damage with my firewall. I do 640. So that means that there's going to be one surviving from these nine stacks. The eight stacks will die. Uh, the nine stacks will have one surviving. The three angels will finish them with no problem, right? So again, since they're flying, this is not going to work like putting a firewall anywhere is over here is not going to work so what we want to do is we want to use a double wall here and here right and first we want to put an open wall up that way they actually fly forward right if we put a closed wall up they would not move and you would just have to keep using mana now in this case they could get morale and uh you know and we would not be able to put up our second wall if for example this guy gets morale and he gets in our face right away but in that case, we would just fly over here and then put a uh, closed wall over here. So we're going to do it like this. All right, no morale. Great. And then we do a closed wall. Now we're going to wait. We're not going to def. We're going to wait so that we can actually hit them uh, after like a couple of stacks are left. So you see that guy got burnt and uh, he attacked us and he died to retail. This guy still has uh, one left and this is why we waited. So now we can finish him. This is the end of the turn, right? And now this firewall disappears. So uh, because we finished that guy, if we did not finish him, we would not have been able to put up the second wall to finish the rest of these guys, right? But since uh, we did finish him, then we can put the second wall up. If we did not, if for some reason there was still a stack alive and we did not uh, put up the second wall, what we would do again is just move over here and start with a closed wall and then put a, um, a second wall next turn. So again, we're going to wait. All right, and just two one stacks left. So we just uh, finish this guy and we get morale and finish this guy. So there, there you guys have it. We just did that break on no losses, basically. So uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to demonstrate to you guys. So when you follow these kinds of things, again, I do want to say that you want to practice <laughs> practice these things in an off-game situation. And when you can help it, uh, when you can get an anti-morale artifact, something to give those creatures uh, neutral morale, you do want to do that. Uh, because taking any of these fights is a bit dangerous. Because, yeah, if they get morale, that can mess you up. Like you guys saw that... Uh, those uh, crystal dragons got morale if they got a couple more morales or those champions uh, you know we were in the situation where if they got morale we would have died right so whenever you can help it bring an anti-morale artifact and uh, just the last thing that I will mention before ending this video is if you are doing a more difficult break Right. If you're doing something like magic elementals, uh, if you have to fight, I don't know, like phoenixes, maybe uh, any kind of dragons, anything like that. Basically, you want to follow the strategies that I've laid out in the previous video on the difficult break guards. So if you're doing them with Luna, you want to have some kind of good magic, right? You want to have resurrect uh, or, you know, maybe implosion, maybe summons, you know, something like that. Um, if you don't have that, then you want to get a hero who is a warrior and not Luna. And you want to have a decent enough army to actually be able to, you know, not take an incredible amount of damage from something like dragons or phoenixes or something like that. If, um, if you're not using any kind of high tier spells, there's no reason to be doing a difficult break fight with Luna. So if there's something that you cannot burn, and if you don't have something like Resurrect, then you may want to try to uh, main a warrior hero to actually do the break. 
I've actually uh, done the break on Luna. Uh, I had a Magic Elementals break once, and I was able to do it uh, because I got Resurrect, uh, and I think I did it on something like 116 or 117 with just six angels, and I was able to do a Magic Elementals break with Luna on Resurrect with no problem like that. So, yeah, like I said, if you are facing the more difficult breaks, uh, you want to come up with some kind of other strategy. Usually that strategy is going to be either some kind of good spells that can help you manage or a good hero who with good army who is not going to take too much damage uh, because he has good battle stats. Alright guys, so I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, again, uh, practice this in the lab before you actually apply it in a game type scenario. Um, but yeah, I do hope that you learned something here, so I am going to end the video here, and if you guys want to see more Heroes 3 content, as usual, feel free to follow my uh, Twitch stream, so you guys get notified when I go live, I'll have the link uh, to the stream in the description below, and feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, uh, so you guys get notified when I release more videos, I generally make a video every week. So, thank you guys so much for watching, good luck in your games, and stay tuned for more videos.